What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and what a crazy week. Out of nowhere, iOS 8 has been jailbroken. Pangu, a previous jailbreak tool in iOS 7, was updated to support the latest iOS 8.1 firmware, and wow, well, a lot of people are asking me, what can you do now that you're jailbroken? Well, in this video, I'm happy to share with you guys the top 10 compatible tweaks with iOS 8. Now, yes, it's a jailbreak that's not easy to do. However, it is still possible and it works fairly well. I mean, it's still in kind of beta stage, but if you guys do want to install it, go ahead and click on the annotation right there. It'll take you to that video, but there's a lot you can already do with it. Surprisingly, a lot of the tweaks that did work in iOS 7 are still compatible with iOS 8. So the tweaks that I'm showing you aren't necessarily officially compatible on iOS 8, but they still do work perfectly and I did test them. Now these are 10 of the best right now. Of course, not all of the ones that we liked on iOS 7 are going to be available right away, but as things become updated, I will be making more of these videos. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Number one is Jelly Lock 7. Now this application gives your lock screen a very minimalistic look. I mean, it's taken straight from Android, but I really like it. There's actually shortcuts for applications that you usually would be able to do on iOS 7, but you can't hear. However, it does serve for a very nice lock screen. It looks really cool. I mean, who's gonna unlock your iPhone and expect you to have an Android lock screen on it? That's really cool. So one, you can unlock your iPhone with it, and it is a little bit buggy, but it does work. Uh, two, you can go into your camera, which I mean is right here. So as you can see, it's pretty much set up for iOS 7, but iOS 8 compatibility will be updated soon. But in the meantime, it's just a really cool and minimalistic look for your lock screen. Definitely would recommend. Two is Barrel. Now this one has been around for a while. It's personally my favorite City of Tweak period, but it gives you this really cool animation when switching between pages because everybody's so used to the usual. It's, it's really like out of the norm to see this on an iPhone. So it's something impressive. You can impress a lot of people with it. And I personally just love how many styles there are to it. So in settings, where all of these tweak settings will be in barrel, if you go into there and go into mode, you can adjust it, you know, any one you want. Now, uh, I pretty much like the cube one, but you can have it at random too. So it'll randomly keep switching between the page slides. Now, unfortunately, a bug I am encountering is that you need to go ahead and respring every single time you do this. So I'm just gonna use a different tweak, which I'll show you in a minute, to use a little respring right here. And once it does respring, it'll give you the option to go through the pages randomly. But every time you do switch the selection, you have to go ahead and respring because it hasn't been updated to iOS 7. But once you do this, it does work perfectly. Well, let me just get in here. And, uh, and as you can see, now they're all random. So you get all sorts of cool transitions. Look at that. That's freaking awesome, guys. So this is personally my favorite City of Tweak period. It hasn't been updated, so you do have to manually respring every time you change the selection, but once you do, works perfectly, no bugs. Next is Alkaline, which is a really cool one. It's such a simple one, but it's the little ones that make the experience so much better. Now, if I enable it, I'll need a respring. And in a moment here, I'll be able to show you what it does. Now, what this tweak does is actually alters your battery icon. So as you can see, I have these little slotted ones right there. And if I want to change it, let me just show you, there are several ones that you can do. So you have a option between spots, this one and bolus, which is just an elongated regular battery icon. I really like this one. I like the sleek little look it gives you. Next is Zeppelin. This one many of you are familiar with. It's been around for so long, but it basically allows you to change your carrier icon right there. As you can see, I have the Zelda Triforce logo and you can go in here and choose between several. Now you can manually add them, but it is a little bit of a process. You have to SSH into your device or you can just download them from Cydia, but the ones that they do give you are really cool. I mean, Nike, if you really like it that much, Beats, Batman. Uh, really cool, really like this one, guys. Definitely would recommend. Next is Status HUD 2. Now what this does is every time you you know, change your volume up here in the top status bar, as you guys can see, it gives you this really cool minimalistic way to change your volume and see where it's at. Instead of bothering you, you know, covering up your content, up here you can manually change it and see it. I really like this one. This is something I wish Apple would, you know, throw into iOS 8, but with their recent habit of finding jailbreak tweaks and putting them into the official firmwares, uh, we can probably see that in a future update. But anyways, if you go into the settings, you can actually change what it looks like to a square alter the settings just a little bit, the size. And as you can see, there's a square right there. It's a little hard to see because it's white in here, but just little squares. So really cool one. Definitely would recommend this one as well. Next one is called No Slow Animation. So let me go ahead and enable this guy. And basically what it does is it reduces the time that your animations take 
to actually process. So if I open something, it opens a lot faster and you can change the speed. As you guys can see, I mean, it makes your device feel really zippy. Even if you're on an older device, it'll look really cool. Now they do recommend you turn off the parallax effect in the background. It does work a little bit better, but I found it works just fine with it. As you can see, this thing literally just zips by. It's really cool. Next is swipe selection. And this is one of my favorites. So, whoops. This is a demo of swipe selection. Cool. All right, so if I enable the keyboard, if you go from one edge of the keyboard to another, your cursor will actually move. That is so useful. Guys, I can't even tell you how many times I've been pissed off because you go into here and you can't get it right where you want it, especially if you're preoccupied with something, it's, it's a bother. So this is really cool. You just move this and it gets your cursor exactly to where you want it, really accurate. And another really useful feature is if you actually go from this button right here, it'll select it for you. How cool is that, guys? This is something that I wish was implemented. It's such a simple yet effective way to highlight text, you know, move your cursor around. So guys, definitely get this. You need this if you're jailbroken. You'll find that it saves you so much time. So it's swipe selection. Go ahead and download it now. All right, so next up is f.lux. Now what this guy does is it actually changes the ambience of your device depending on what time of day or what environment you're in. So you do have to give it your location and you can set the daytime and nighttime settings in here pretty much Whenever you encounter a different type of light, you know how your iPhone displays always the same color. Well, this tweak basically changes it uh, according to your ambience where you're at. So as you guys can see, based on the lighting in this room, it just changed it. It gives the screen a really warm effect. Candle, incandescent. So as you can see, it yellows it, but it's easier on the eyes definitely. And depending on you know where you're at, what time it is, you're gonna get different results. And I absolutely love it. Now, regular, fluorescent. So definitely would recommend this one. It works throughout the entire application. And you know, it's playing around, it's kind of funny right now because I have a whole bunch of lights aimed at it, but usually if you're just using it in the dark, it'll be so much easier on your eyes. And this is something that's really useful, absolutely free. Go ahead and download it right now. Next is virtual home. So what this guy does is it gives your touch ID sensor some extra functionality besides just unlocking your lock screen or making purchases. Now this is only obviously compatible for the 5S, 6, 6 Plus, and all the iPads that now have the Touch ID sensor. But basically you can program while you're inside the iPhone what your Touch ID will do. So if I just hold it, it'll bring up my uh, multitasking menu. There you go. So it's actually really cool because you can have your iPhone start doing a whole bunch of different things, little shortcuts get you somewhere just by pressing it. You can also double tap it to program as well. So. There's a lot you can do in here. So you can do so much. I mean, instead of going out of an application that you're currently using and opening up another one, you can go straight to this program it and either go into multitasking. You can even double tap or put the iPhone to sleep. So it depends on you what you want to program it to do, but it is a very functional little tweak. Now, the last tweak I'm going to recommend isn't one you can see function. It runs in the background and it's a must. So if you're going to be downloading a number of tweaks, this is a must. Sometimes the developer will slip in some code to where if you go into the tweak settings, it'll open up something in Safari or in the app store. And what this tweak does, it's called no ad store open, is it'll actually prevent that from happening. Sometimes you'll be going into those tweak settings and you'll be redirected in order for the developer to make some money. So it's not something that you want to happen and this tweak pretty much prevents it. And it's not one you can see, but it's definitely a must. Now, if you're having trouble with the iOS 8 jailbreak, I will be releasing a video very soon, you know, a better guide to installing it. And I know a lot of people are having so many issues, but it is worth jailbreaking your device. You can do so much. And I've had a lot of people ask me, will this make my device slower? And the truth is no. Unless you're jailbreaking your iPhone 4S with like, 15 gigabytes of data on it, you could see a small impact in performance if you install a lot of tweaks at the same time, but one or two, you won't see any difference. It's a really cool thing to do to your device and there's really no limit to what you can do. You can change the complete look of iOS 8. It's pretty much like rooting your Android phone. I mean, you can install themes, tweaks, all sorts of applications, you get free hotspot. There's still a lot that a jailbreak can do for your device. And although Apple is catching up, I mean, with iOS 8, they're throwing in a whole bunch of new cool features and that's great and everything, but jailbreaking takes it to the next level. You can do so much more with your device and I'm really excited to see all the new things that will be coming out. I'll be making lots of these videos. I know you guys do like them. So hope you guys like this video. Thumbs up. Have a great day, guys. Peace.